I have accumulated all these sample sets over time tucked away everywhere and this month I've decided to get down to sampling all these sets to finally talk about them in the channel. It is gifting season after all these sets would make for good perfume gifts for the coming holidays. Plus, this might help you put together your own perfume wish list. Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Jane and this channel is all about fragrances. Thank you for dropping by and thank you for your interest in my channel. If you have been following this series, we are currently on the third one and I chose to make this video because of a viewer subscriber who asked about the brand. Today's sample sets are from Wilhelm Parfumery. I have a previous video on two of their perfumes, Moon Carnival and Mango Skin. If you're interested to catch it and other sample set reviews, I will leave the links down in the description box below. And if you haven't seen the last featured sample set, it was on celebrity perfume brand Sarah Jessica Parker Fragrances. I hope you can catch it. You can also find the link in the description down below. Wilhelm Perfumery is a niche fragrance house based in New York and owned by Jan Algren. The brand boasts of 31 fragrances to date and I have 9 of them here. 11 actually if you count Mango Skin and Moon Carnival included in the sets. Their discovery kits come in threes and if I remember correctly, I purchased this back in January or February of 2022 during a sale was it they have pre-selected kits as well as a custom kit for you to choose from one set goes for 18 euros that's about 1100 pesos using our current exchange rate if you ask me it's an okay price for a niche brand i mean fragrance de bois samples still are the prices that i know of i'm sure you're all excited to hear about these perfumes and so without further ado let's jump right in the first trio has Dear Polly, Modest Mimosa, and Purple Fig. I'm not sure if this was how they originally came. Pretty sure I've mixed and moved perfumes around and or got the custom sets instead of the pre-selected ones. Dear Polly, this one has a story behind the creation of this perfume. This was said to be a love letter in sent to Mr. Algren's wife for when they are apart. Notes include bergamot and apple, black tea, oak moss, black amber, and musk. And these notes were carefully selected to convey Mr. Algren's scent association to depict his fondest memories of his wife. I was truthfully expecting leather to be in the notes list. That was how this perfume comes across to me in the opening. The masculine, smoky, almost burnt, suede-like, less animalic type leather note. But it's not. I'm guessing it is the black amber note that's coming across as leather-esque. And the intense smokiness must be the black tea in here. The smoky, leathery segment dies down as this perfume dries down. And smells more and more like sweetened black tea flavored with some warm spices and hints of fruits. This part of the perfume perfume reminds me a lot of Thé Noir by Le Labo. Some say this smell like Nest Indigo, the tea portion, yes, but this is a lot darker and denser, more cool weather perfume, less airy fresh than Indigo, which you can wear on a warmer day. Compared to Indigo, this also smells more luxurious and upscale. Dear Polly is very unisex to me, while Thé Noir and Indigo lean feminine. This to me is a cool weather perfume. Have you ever smelled fresh ripe star fruit? This is how modest mimosa smells like to me by scent association. I asked my brother to smell this and he said it absolutely smells like star fruit to him. Well, we grew up eating star fruit a lot. We had it three back home. This smells green and tart but juicy sweet at the same time. This becomes increasingly powdery as the perfume develops. This is notes of neroli, carrot, mimosa, violet, musk, and leather. Oddly though, I do not smell the tiniest hint of leather in this perfume. After the blast of green vegetal notes in the opening this is rather soft and gentle and fluffy fresh powdery as this dries down this will be lovely for warm days in late spring to early summer in my honest opinion i personally am not a fan of this perfume but i believe this is an acquired taste kind of perfume divisive and polarizing in my honest opinion this lean feminine to my nose 
purple fig as you can see from the amount of sample left in this vial I've worn this perfume more than the others well this is a fresh perfume so it was easy to spray more I'm not a big fan of fig in perfumery. Philosicos by Diptyque, for example, does not particularly appeal to me despite the fact that it's a fig-centric perfume. But purple fig isn't a simple fig to me. I suspect it must be the angelica notes in here that draws me in. I love the angelica note and for some, some weird reason, this smells super good on my skin. FYI, Guerlain's Angelique Noir is an absolute favorite of mine. Together with Angelica, this is cassis and lemon on top, galbanum and cyclamine in the heart and cypress and cedar in the base. I wish this stayed longer on my skin because at the 4 hour mark, except for my hair, smelling a little like this perfume, this is so gone. This lean feminine to my nose and yes, another polarizing perfume to be honest, so please sample first on your skin. Moving on to the next set of threes, this one has Stockholm 1978, Basilico and Fellini, and London Funk. This set contains the more masculine leading scents, so my husband helped me try them on. First up, Stockholm 1978. He says it's an everyday, easygoing, no-brainer, sort of generic type perfume, great for after shower and for when you need to spray something on to refresh. For me, there's something fresh and warm in here at the same time. I suspect it's the marriage of lemon to almond and black pepper that's giving me this vibe. In here are rosemary and geranium, moss, black amber, and patchouli. These are mostly masculine notes that when combined together smells a lot like a perfume we've smelled a lot growing up. Now, a big fan of this one. For Basilico and Fellini, this was not the first time my husband smelled this perfume. We sampled this together last year, but he was more impressed with Morning Chest than this one. In this trio, though, this is his favorite. Look at how much is left of this sample. His description of this perfume was, This smells like the male counterpart of one of my Hermes garden perfume that smells a lot like grass. Pretty sure he was talking about Un Jardin sur la Toit. You'd see this perfume pop up in a handful of my videos. He smells it a lot around here because I wear it a lot. And yes, he is super right. I couldn't have put it any better. This has notes of basil, pitahaya, fig, violet, green grass, hay, and vetiver. My husband also wished this lasted longer. He wore this to work during the day tropical climate London funk smells funky to me I'm not quite sure how else to put it my husband's description an unidentified overripe fruit not yet spoiled but starting to smell like it already please bear in mind that we sample in tropical climates so this might smell very different in another climate or season this perfume has juniper berries basil cardamom bergamot blackcurrant tree food vetiver Yerba Mate, Ambergris, and Sandalwood. Again, not a fan of this one. For this trio, please sample first. This last set includes Room Service, Peony Couture, and Poets of Berlin. Room service smells to me like a 1990s female antiperspirant deodorant roll-on, those that come in glass bottles then. This has that kind of powdery freshness smell. It's not unpleasant. I just thought it's not too perfumey. This smells more like a body care product than an actual perfume. This has an old school type powdery smell to it that I'm not a big fan of. But I'm not a big fan of powdery in general. So, I read somewhere that Victoria Beckham adores this perfume and calls it super chic. This is notes of blackberry, mandarin orange, orchid, violet, bamboo, musk, black amber, and sandalwood. This is a polarizing perfume and very much niche. Some say this smells a lot like Chloe EDP, an all-time favorite of mine. Nope, I disagree 100%. Peony Couture does smell more like a Chloe Eau de Parfum to my nose more than room service does. This is, as the name implies, Chloe EDP's Couture version. In the opening, you'd smell a lot of roses and then this dries down to a softer, lighter peony scent. While peonies are not related to roses, they sure do look like one. This has black pepper, anise, Turkish rose, peony, incense, and cedar. But while this smells a lot like Chloe EDP, this is the spicier, less soapy, clean version of the two. So if you love Chloe, Chloe, you are sure to love this. My issue is the price. This smells designer in niche price tag and packaging. Well, I may be biased because I love Chloe EDP, but I go for Chloe anytime. Lasting power is same, 4 hours for both. Nice perfume, but overpriced. 
poets of Berlin caught me by surprise. I wasn't going to like this piece of off the notes, but I absolutely did. And this landed a spot in my wish list now. First of all, this is a vanilla perfume. Yes, it is sweet, but not sweet all the way. It's a little fruity and green and almost dark and bitter, yet fresh enough for me to wear on an October day here in the Philippines. The perfume that reminds me of this the most is the now discontinued Decadence by Marc Jacobs. This is not an exact dupe, but gives me almost the same aura. I remember using the term comforic to describe decadence in one of my videos. And while this isn't nearly as comforic, this gives you the same mysterious vibe. Love it or hate it type scent. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but I absolutely love this. Notes include blueberry and lemon, bamboo and oris, vanilla, sandalwood, and vetiver. This is very wearable in Vermont climate day and night, spray less during the day. So for you guys in search of a dupe or a close enough dupe of decadence by Marc Jacobs, give this one a try. You just might like it. This lasted all day on me and definitely feminine leaning. Mango Skin and Moon Carnival have been in some of my videos so I will not go through them anymore. Instead, I will link the videos where I talk about them down in the description. Philhelm Perfumery fragrances are available locally at Art of Scent in-store and online. The 20ml bottle retails for 5,280 pesos, the 50ml goes for 10,500, and the 100ml goes for 13,860 pesos. These bottles go on sale during the Black Friday Cyber Monday weekend. You can opt to buy them to save a little cash. Art of Scent do not have these little sample sets, unfortunately. For Wilhelm perfumes, I urge you all to sample first. These are definitely definitely all very niche some are polarizing, and some are taste-specific. And although all these are marketed as unisex, some do lean femme or masculine plus. These are a pricey lot to blind buy. You can always visit Art of Scent to take a whiff of this. They all have the available ones out on display and for sampling. Moon Carnival and Mango Skin aside, my favorite from these sets are Poets of Berlin, and purple fig. These were unexpected picks for me, to be honest. My husband likes Basilico and Fellini. So that is it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your favorite from Wilhelm if you have one and why. Special thanks to my husband and my brother for helping me sample this. Thank you all for making it this far. Another sample set will be coming your way soon, so please watch out for the next one. By the way, I will be giving one of these unused set away in December as my Thanksgiving gift to you all for helping me make it to 6K. Mechanics will be posted soon. And before you leave this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up, share this video to anyone who might be interested, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and click, more importantly, click the bell to be notified of future videos and giveaways. Take care, you all. Smell your absolute best, and see you in the next one. Bye!